Hello everyone and welcome to another week here on the Fry Smiles Oral Health Network. I'm your host Scott Fry and I forgot to mention something last week uh, when we were talking about different coffee brews and the amount of staining compounds. Um, with espresso, if you're having more than one cup, that's when you start to actually have more of the staining compounds than you would have in a regular cup of coffee because um, even though there's a smaller volume and per volume there's actually a higher concentration of staining compounds, you only really start to get to see the effects after about uh, two cups of espresso when you're comparing it to a regular cup of coffee. I hope that kind of makes sense. Um, it's a little complicated. But and I'm in the middle of finals week here, a little tired. Uh, I'm going to be needing this coffee today. Uh, but today's topic, we're talking about the types of beans and the amount of staining compounds. And you know the formula, actually, it's pretty darn simple. Robusta beans have more staining compounds than Arabic, Ara, Arabica beans. Ugh, that, was, that was tough getting out. Um, yeah, there's really only two types of coffee beans out there. Uh, for all those of you uh, familiar with um, you know, coffee varieties, you probably already know this. There's also some hybrid beans, but those don't really follow the rules, so we're just kind of uh, going to kind of ignore them for today. Um, you, know, you rarely see uh, a coffee blend that's 100% uh, Robusta. Uh, usually the Robusta beans are put together um, as a minor component with uh, Arabica beans and they're just added mainly to reduce the cost. They're pretty inexpensive to make. They produce more fruit per acre and they can just, they're frankly just easier to grow. Uh, not that I would have any idea about that. Um, but you know a lot of people seem to think that they're more of an inferior bean you know, they are more, uh, I guess, inexpensive, but there are a lot of great espresso blends uh, that contain Robusta to draw out more of the crema, uh, which we kind of talked a little bit about last week um, with the coffee brews. Uh, but, you know, so who really knows what's good and what's not? You know, my opinion is if it tastes great, then it's great coffee. Um, you know, drink a lot of it, you probably know what you like and don't like, and everybody's different. So. You know, just go with something that you happen to like and that tastes good. But, um, you know, really, you know, in order to determine whether you're drinking an Arabica or a Robusta blend of coffee, the best way, honestly, is to just go ahead and either look on the package or ask somebody. Ask somebody who's selling it, um, and they usually will be able to tell you. You can do things like you can take a look at the price, and usually the really, really low, noticeably low price coffees um, will most likely have robusta beans in them, uh, or you can kind of look at the country of origin, but those two methods are you know, not super accurate. The best way is just to ask somebody. Um, but yeah, that's, that's our show for today. Um, you know, your local coffee house will probably be using uh, most likely 100% Arabica, so you don't really have to worry too much about uh, staining from robusta beans. Um, Remember to go on, show your support for the More Open Smiles movement, which we just got started um, the other week. Um, you can go ahead and become a fan on Facebook, and stay tuned for next week. We'll be talking more about coffee and stains. Take care, everyone.